In Genesis.
This is 24. We got an interesting lesson here. I don't know if you've seen it. But Genesis 24, 15. What happened is Abraham sent his servant to go find a wife for Isaac. Abraham becomes a type of God. His servant becomes a type of Holy Spirit. While Isaac becomes a type of Jesus Christ, Rebecca becomes a type of church. But watch this lesson and learn. They say Santa Claus is watching. Yeah, there is no Santa Claus. And it came to pass, Genesis 24, 15, before he had done speaking, he's praying. Behold, Rebecca came out, who was born to Bethel, the son of Micah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with a pitcher on her shoulder. And the dancer was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. She went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And a servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. She said, Drink, my lord. And she hastened, let down the pitcher upon her hand, and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels, also until they have done drinking. She hastened and emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran again <coughs> unto the well to draw water, and drew her drew for all the camels. Can't read today. And she hastened and emptied her pitcher in a trough and ran again unto the well to draw water, drew water for all the camels. And the man wandering at her at her held his peace to wit, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. It came to pass as the camels were done drinking, the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. He says, Who daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge it? She said, I am the daughter of Bethel, the son of Micah, which she bore in the Nahor. She said, Moreover, we have both straw and provider enough to room to lodge it. Okay. Let's go down to verse 45. Now the servant is in Rebekah's family's house, Laban's house. And they put out a meal before the servant. Verse 45, he says, Behold, I have done speaking in my heart. And what he's saying, he's going to recap what just happened. He said, verse, verse 45, Behold, I had done speaking, praying in my heart. Behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. She went down unto the well and drew water. And she said unto, unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank. And she made a camels drink also. And I asked her, I said, Whose daughter art thou? She said, The daughter of Beth Hills, Nahor's son, who might have bared unto him, and I put an earring upon her face. Here is part of faith. And the bracelets upon her hands. What do we learn? Somebody's watching you. The Bible says, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. Somebody's watching. And they want the, you know, by the song Santa Claus. He is not watching. There is no Santa Claus. Whether you're a Christian listening to this, or you're lost and going to hell. You think nobody's watching. Somebody's watching. The Holy Spirit is watching. The Holy Spirit records it. Who do you think wrote this? Moses wrote it. How did Moses write it? God inspired him. God dictated it to him. Where did Moses get it from? He got it from God. Where did God get it from? He got it from the Holy Spirit. This is not a story where Moses 
says, okay, sit there, Rebecca, tell me what happened. No, Rebecca's dead. Time of Moses. Moses is not living at this time. This is not the writing of Abraham, Isaac, the servant, Nahor, Bethuel, Micah, or even Rebecca. We've got to come to the conclusion. Uh, I know I'm, I'm growing old in my age and all that. And I, one time in prison ministry, I said, you know, the great mystery of Jimmy Hoffa. You know, who's Jimmy Hoffa? Nobody knows where the body of Jimmy Hoffa, what even happened to Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, somebody knows. His name is God. Jesus knows. The Holy Spirit knows. And Emily, uh, Emily Earnhardt, what happened to her? Nobody knows. God knows. Satan knows. Holy Spirit knows. Emily knows. And the very fact is, for a Christian, those who go to church, or don't go to church, God knows if you are a child of God or if you're the child of the devil. God knows you're saved. You may, oh, I don't think that person is saved. God knows. And it might quite shock you. I think the rapture of the church is going to shock a lot of people. But and the fact is, you're going to see people there at the meeting in the clouds you would never expect to see there. And then when we meet in the clouds, you're going to expect to see somebody there. And they're not. God knows. God knows our salvation. Some people are not told to, re to remember the date they were saved. Born again. I tell them. This date is an important date. They may have forgotten the date they were born again. God knows. And God has it recorded. Based how churches will honor the birth of a sinner rather than the birth of a newborn Christian, newly saved Christian. You may be in the darkness sinning. God knows. That preacher who had adulterous, fornicating relationship with a 16 year old. All those years, she knew. Her boyfriend knew, which turned to be her, I believe, her husband. And the preacher. And God knew. This thing with the Southern Baptist Church. The mystery. The hiding. There's no hiding from God. God knows. There are things in my life right now you don't know, but God knows. The Bible says Rebecca was a virgin. What if she wasn't? What if Rebecca slipped out, went up to the hill with one of the boys, a little touchy, a little feely, a little huggy, a little kissy? God knew she was a virgin. How was, how was the servant of Abraham to know she was a virgin? Where is that record? I mean, we read it. Go back up here. We'll read it. It's here. Verse 16. And the dancer was very fair to look upon a virgin. The servant didn't know that. The Holy Spirit did. How did they know Mary was a virgin? The Holy Spirit. 
you know, your virginity is the best gift you can give to your newlywed spouse. You have been untouched and undefiled by anybody. And that honeymoon night, that marriage bed, God knows. And then your spouse, your new spouse, your newlywed spouse may know. So, she went down the well and filled her pitcher and came up. That's a tedious job. That's hard work. So it went down to the well. So you got to go down to the well and then you got to walk up. It's heavy. Nowhere does the Bible say she stopped and gossiped. She stopped and went and played hopscotch or whatever. She didn't flaunt herself with the boys. She had a mission to go to the well, fill her pitcher, and get back home. And that's exactly what she did. She didn't get distracted. If she did not show up to the well, she would not have been chosen. Or she said, oh, I don't want to go to the well that day. And then he, she's asked some water. She said, drink. What she was selfish. What if by chance she was selfish? What if she had a bad day? I'll just leave me alone, will you? You're bothering me. There's a bucket over there. There's a can over there. Leave me alone. What if, it, what if the wrong attitude at the wrong time? Have we not had those attitudes at the wrong time? Have we not in our walk been angry, been distracted, been... And it might come up at the wrong time. It might affect others the wrong way. The Lord knows. It says she hasted. She didn't waste time. She didn't sit there holding a bug and gab, 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 gab. Oh, do you know about these people who are on trial, going to court and all that? Do you know about, about this sports team? They're almost there, going to get the trophy. Do you hear about this person? No, she let down and gave the man drink what he wanted. And then, when he's done drinking, she said, without the man asked, he says, I'll draw water for the camel. Till they have done drinking. Now we're talking about many gallons of water. I think it was ten camels. She says, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna give those camels something to drink. He didn't ask. She says, I'm gonna make sure those camels are completely full. And we gotta go down to the well, then up. Down to the well, and up. And she hastened and emptied her pitcher in the trough, and ran again unto the well, and drew water, and drew for all the kids. She's going down and up, down and up, down and up. And she's hasting. She's not wasting time. She's not complaining. What if the whole attitude of Rebecca or anybody, Stiley, or you? What if we were anything but Christian like? What if we were anything but hardworking? What if at one point in time I've just had enough, I'm done? 
I've been there. I've been wanting to quit. Listen, when you take the stand under... I understand what Paul said. Have I become your enemy because I spoke in the truth? I got more wounds in my back and my butt from fellow Christians than I do from the world. But it's not time to put the picture down and walk away. It's not time to sit down and gab and talk. It's not time to be worldly and carnal. It's not the time to sin. And there's got to be times in our walk where we are asked to do something and we go up and beyond what was asked. Jesus said, if a man smites you on the, on the right cheek, turn the left. If the man takes you to court to sue you at your coat, give him the coat also. He says, go one mile, go two miles. Rebecca was asked to give a man a drink of water, and she turned around and said, let me give all the camels a drink of water, and when I am done, when they are full. And by the way, her character was, she's pure. She hasn't slept around. She hasn't been in a back seat. She hasn't been in a rock and roll. She doesn't know what serving the devil. I'm going to take that virginity too in the pureness. In the chasteness. And not only a sexual nature. But I'm talking about as a fine young lady. She wasn't involved in the sin. And I know they didn't have cigarettes back. You know. She didn't meet with, with the teenage or her age. Behind the bushes to smoke cigarettes like I did. When I first started smoking cigarettes, which now I've quit, thank the Lord. I used to hide. Because my my dad's boss would drive by the bus stop. When I saw his yellow truck go by, then I lit up my cigarette. I hide the cigarettes in my sleeve. I hide them in my, in my sock. One day that guy was running late. I didn't think about it. And he w went to work late. And he saw me smoking. And he reported to my dad. Somebody's watching you. Or even the fact is, what if our conduct is, is less than clean? What if somebody goes to church and they're going to church because, hey, I can make a business deal. Or... Going to church saved me, which it doesn't. Or oh, that's a mighty fine girl there, you know. I just go to church for her and get her favor and court her and marry her and then ruin her life. I know a woman who married a man. She could tell me, I thought he was a Christian. I thought he was a Christian. I thought he was a Christian. I said, What happened? I married and found out he wasn't a Christian. End up getting divorced. What if you got the preacher full? What if the preacher has the congregation full? So many people, oh, we got a great preacher, preacher, we got a great preacher. Yeah, what does God know that you don't know? What is an outsized source? When I look at a preacher, look at somebody, I'm looking at the Word of God, and I'm like, uh-huh. That's not right. You see the, other, see, the people get fooled because they get loving the man. You know, my jury uh, mother and father, they got, a, they got a child, they will look, overlook. To me, I watch reality programs, and some of them are court. And involved in prison. I've been involved in a prison ministry for six years. 
And I swear, you can get somebody who, who could murder in a whole entire town. And when, when the mother is interviewed by the media, my boy is a wonderful boy. Such a, he wouldn't do such a thing. There's a private life that the world don't see, but God sees it. There's even a private life that we think even God doesn't see, and God sees it. God, we all have that one sin. I got that one sin. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You know, we got that one sin. You know, sometimes we do it because we want to do it. And then we have that apology to God, and we don't mean it. God knows it. God knows you're lying. And then there's time that that, that sin creeps up, and happens in our life, and and you are in tears, and you are you are just heartbroken. God knows. God knows your motive. Why did you give that homeless person money? Why did you send them that card? Why did you make that phone call? Why do you go to church? Why do you go to a particular church? God knows. Why did you marry that person? Why you do what you do? What is your heart and what is your motive? God knows. I don't think Rebecca ever realized that this event, and she going down to the well, is going to change her whole entire life. I don't think Rebecca ever knew that for good, Rebecca is going to be written in the pages of the Holy King James Bible. It's, isn't it good that she did something good? Isn't it written that, look, look how well she was. What do, you, what do you say about the conduct of David? David's a wonderful man. Did you know he, he committed adultery and murder with Bathsheba and Uriah? Bathsheba the wife, Uriah the Did you know that? Where did you learn that? The Holy Spirit told us through the Bible. If the Holy Spirit never told us through the Bible, we would never know. Interesting, isn't it? What was the disciple that said three times denying the Lord Jesus? Peter. Where'd you learn that? You learned that from the Gospels. Who wrote the Gospel? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. Who told them to write? The Holy Spirit. There are events in the Bible written Maybe one man knew. Maybe many men knew. Maybe no one knew. How do we know what happened in the garden with Jesus at Gethsemane? With Peter? No, no, Peter was asleep. No, John was asleep. No, James was asleep. The other disciples were, were us. How'd you know that? The Holy Spirit told you. How do you know what happened to John the Baptist's father? I can never remember his name. While he's in the holy place with Gabriel. How do you know that? Gabriel didn't write that. The Holy Spirit said, write this down. 
How about the conversation Gabriel with Mary? How do you know that? The Holy Spirit told you. And we, we come to the story here, down to verse 45 again. He's at her house, and he tells everything that happened, and everything was good. I mean, what if, what if things were different? What if they came, they came to her house and said, you know, what? your daughter came up and she was flashing a little booty. She's got that wicked bluegrass music in her iPod, iPhone, whatever you want to call it. How about you, you, we saw your son, and, and he was looking at his phone, and he had pornographic pictures on there. How about that? How about what you see on your computer screen, on your television screen, or on your phone screen that nobody else knows but you and God and the devil? How about the very fact is, if you are saved and born again, in you, you have the Holy Spirit. And you're off having a beer. You are drinking down a beer and the Holy Spirit is being subject to that sin. Come on, how about the Southern Baptists? I don't know if they're saved or not. But let's say some of those other Baptists are saved, and they can be saved. They are involved in sexual sins, adultery and fornication. I like to see them preach about David. But they're involved in, 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 in fornication and adultery. And the Holy Spirit that indwells in them, they are defiling the Holy Spirit. And those that know about it, hide it. Friend Nathan didn't hide it. You try to hide. Okay, your mom didn't see it. Maybe your dad turned a blind eye. Your siblings, they, they don't know. Your teacher don't know. Else doesn't know. Your neighbor doesn't know. God knows. Whether you're saved or lost. And we're so foolish at that. I was... I had a brother. My brother lived at my grandma's house, so I was like a single child growing up in my parents' house. So I was the only child in my, my parents' house. And I don't know where I got this, this notion, but I could do things wrong, but mom would never know it was me. Sometimes Kitty, my dog, got blamed. No, mom knew. You know, we go to God, oh, God, it's... It, it's Adam, yes, why'd you do it? Her fault, and your fault for giving her me. Oh, Adam, oh, Styling, oh, fill your name in the blank. What if Rebecca's character would have been a whole lot different in Genesis 24? It wasn't, but what if it was? What if God today says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to answer that prayer. I am going to... Well, the way you are today, forget it. Everybody, I'm going to use it as an illustration. Everybody knows I'm looking for a wife. Let that one day God says, okay, here she is. And I'm angry and I'm miserable and I look like crap. 
I'm a bear. And I can be. I'm not going to do so good if God has her come to me. I had just made it turn her away. God is going to be like, we're going to have to do something else. <laughs> we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to work on that. You know, when David sinned against Bathsheba and Uriah, man, he tore his whole family up. It never got right. Abraham says, she's my sister. God's like, Abraham, really? Come on. And then later on, Isaac turns around and said, she's my sister. Well, I wonder where he learned that from. And Isaac wasn't around. Both times Abraham did that. Isaac wasn't even conceived. Interesting. Sometimes we do the sins our parents do. Or our boss. Or our co-workers. Or our classmates. God knows you're an idiot. Stop it. Who got you into cigarette smoking? Who got you? I did, myself. No need in giving the... I know the name of the person I asked for the cigarette from. It ain't his fault. My fault. Okay? You see, to get a pardon from God, we got to be honest and say, Guilty! Or there's no pardon. But we got to realize when we are going through life, the Holy Spirit sitting there breaking it down. They say Santa Claus is making a list and checking it twice. No, the Holy Spirit is. Stop stealing the credit from God to, to your God. You know, a pastor in a congregation, if a pastor is fooling and deceiving and lying to that congregation, he's going to be made known at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Either or. Save the law. As a congregation or as a member of a church, and you are fooling your pastor or your, or your fellow brethren, you're going to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. You know, whether you're male or female, God's watching. Whether you're saved or lost, God... Listen, Revelation 20 says about the unsaved, the books were open. God knows. There's only one way to get your sins erased. From the journal written by the Holy Spirit. I believe that there is a journal in heaven. Styley William Hayward. Conceived about January 1968. Thereabout. I don't know. Born September 6, 1968. I was born premature. I was, I was early. Way early. And then the pen of the Holy Spirit started right Lost. Up to 1987, the Holy Spirit is recording everything I've done, even I was lost. Now, I'd be ashamed, and you would be ashamed to know what he wrote. There were good things in there, and there were bad things in there. Stiley and his friend Kevin would chop or cut earthworms for God. Stiley and Kevin would look up to the heavens and see God. Not evolution. Stiley seen a lot of the female anatomy that he should never have seen. Stiley would sneak off to, to, the, to the camper and eat a whole entire box of uh, Lucky Charms. Or rice, whatever cereal you have. 
Stiley was too stupid enough to put the box in the garbage. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder how Mountain Dew. Stiley, one, one Christmas, went around. He found stuff. You know, he thought it would be dear, and he wrapped it up in paper. And he gave it to his mom and dad. I remember one time I, I found an eight ball, a, a, a billiard ball, eight ball. And I wrapped it up, and I, whatever reason, I don't even remember. I, I gave it to my dad, and it was my dad's present for Christmas. It didn't cost me nothing, but I found it. I thought, you know, and years and years and years and years later, I'm a teenager. I'm doing work down in the cellar of our house. Workman, I'm looking for a specific tool. I cleared a bunch of things off, and there was an eight ball. My dad kept it. I stole money from my dad. Holy Spirit wrote that down. That's a 20. That's a 10. For cigarettes. Wrote it down. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. April 25th, 1987. That was written down, saved. I'm a child of God. The Holy Spirit came and dwelled me. All those sins were erased out of this journal. All of them. If you confess your sins, God is faithful enough to forgive and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Your sins can be erased out of your journal by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. Stiley wrote a letter to Dad. Explained about conversion. I said, Dad, you tell me how much money I owe you and I'll pay you back. Holy Spirit said, I see that. That letter may be in heaven. Many, many sins, and I'm not. They've been recorded, and where I truthfully, honestly, with a with a with a broken, contrite heart, repented of those sins, they've been erased. Lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Can't think of a third one. Lust of the eyes. The tools of Satan. God writes that down. And then God writes it down and says, nope, not looking at that. I refuse to. God writes that down. And when David took that second look, God wrote that down. I guarantee there were many times in David's life he looked at women more than, more than twice. I guarantee it. But the day he called Bathsheba, the Holy Spirit said, write that down. And there's only one way for Bathsheba to conceive by a baby of David. The Holy Spirit said, write that down. When I'm in a room with a married woman, write that down. All right, he put it under the blood, erase it. I see what you're thinking, write that down. I heard what you said, write that down. You see, everything we do, every verb we do, action, whether we physically do it or whether we think about it. You don't have to commit adultery with a woman by going and laying on a bed or in the backseat of a car or on the floor or whatever. All you, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, all you got to do is think about it. Everything you're thinking, everything you're doing, everything you say is being written down. And if it's a sin, it can be erased by the blood of Jesus. 
Now, if you've got a double standard, you're saying or doing letter A, but your life is doing a letter B. You're, you're going to church and you're acting holy and you're acting Christ-like. And then Monday morning to the, the next Sunday, you're living like the devil. God knows. You're a preacher or a pastor or a Sunday school teacher. You're in that pulpit, oh, but your heart's not in it. You got other alternative motives. You're lying. You're not fooling the Holy Spirit. You tell your spouse you love them and you don't. God knows. And the Holy Spirit, that servant of Abraham, told Rebecca's family every thing she done and he told it correctly he didn't add or subtract to the story that's what the Holy Spirit does to God that's what the Holy Spirit is going to be doing at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment or the saved or for the lost that's the job of the Holy Spirit. and he's not going to glamorize it he ain't going to paint it up he ain't going to dress it up he's going to tell him this is exactly what happened. Holy Spirit, do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So help you, God. So help me. Because I'm God. I mean, Holy Spirit, not me. There'll be no shadow of doubt. There'll be no questioning to what the Holy Spirit is. And everything to Rebecca's conduct was good. That's not always so in our Christian walk, is it? Is it? Okay. What do you get out of Genesis 24? God sees everything we do. God knows everything we do. God knows the motive that we do it. God, God, his eyes are in every place. He holding the evil and the good. 